Sessions Privateer FX. Coming at you 03 Feb. It's Monday. Sensing a very, very tricky week ahead of us here. Um, we have Logic versus Price, I think, is going to have a battle royale. Price always wins. Obviously, we're paid in this business on price. We're not paid on Logic. So um, let's be open minded. Let's look both ways. Um, at least Vol is ticking up. So no excuses. Let's take a look at this Aussie to start here. Um, same exact low last night. Couldn't get below 83. Obviously, um, the 10 year lows are knocking on the door. Down here at 70. Can't get to those. Where are the 10 year lows? 70 or 60? Yeah, 70, 66, 70. Uh, could not get to those lows. We zip in onto the uh, dailies. Lots of red here. This is the beginning of the fires. Now this is the Chinese virus, global Armageddon. Um, couldn't make a new low. Now we have this little mini double bottom down at 83, neckline at 06. Careful topside Aussie market is massively short. Um, I intuitively think this. Uh, we know the systems are short just because of those bars. I think the humans are probably square or probably short. Um, this could squeeze a fair bit and still be bearish, right? You know, this thing could squeeze up to 67.50. No problem. It could really squeeze up to 68.24. No problem. So be careful. This has the makings of a squeeze. China did went no lower. Equities popped a bit. Things are looking pretty stable price-wise. The story-wise, things are looking very unstable. I asked my brother who was traveling internationally last week a couple of European countries. I said, uh, do you know what coronavirus is? He's in IT, my brother. Uh, are you nervous about it? He's like, yeah, no, I know what it is. There were some masks in, in the Munich airport. He goes, uh, you know, he traveled through Newark, took a couple of trains down to Maryland. He was like, nah, I don't really give a shit. Um, should be fine. Uh, I don't know what that means, but it kind of means that it hasn't really taken hold of the American public yet or probably the Western world. Obviously here in Switzerland, nobody cares. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. My point is, is just look both ways. We in this market obviously get all the news first. We see all the news. We study the news. Uh, and it can be a little bit overkill sometimes. So anyway, as I beat the dead horse look both ways Aussie top side looks more interesting than downside to me today uh, euro yen interesting setup here now just technically uh, again you lean on technicals when logic is 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 lacking and what are technicals technicals is just a graph of price um, so we're leaning on price this week Logic says risk off, but price says be careful. Not even close um, to a new range low in euro yen. Now we have all these highs at 40. Um, according to my price, uh, my pricing tool, 40 traded uh, last night, probably early, early Asia. I'm not sure how true that is. I cannot. I can't see the liquidity that that went through because I didn't have that function on at the open last night. But be that as it may, 35 the high and sort of real liquidity up through 40. Euro yen's going to squeeze, um, and this is this looks like just a classic break trade, uh, even though break trading is is not really in vogue right now. 
vol has ticked up. Uh, overnight vol in euro yen is is over 12 right now. So let's see what is it? Yeah, 12.5. So that's enough. Um, that's enough vol to get 40, 50 ticks uh, on a trade. So euro yen through 40. Watch this. Sort of corresponds yearly with uh, Aussie through 05. Let's look at dollar yen. Um, we're very bearish dollar yen. We're just trying to figure out when, where uh, to sell. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to get a chance to sell 80s this week. So right now we're in patience mode. Um, but we like dollar yen lower. Not much to do here at 50. Um, we'll have to see. Sterling gap down because of Boris. Tell you what, um, you better hope there's no ego involved on the European side of these negotiations. Uh, because if there is, and there's any kind of spiteful or sort of haughty behavior out of Europe, England has the most to lose. I'm so tired of British people saying, oh, look at all the German cars in London. Um, yes, there are a fair few German cars in London, but, you know, look at the mini plant, look at the manufacturing, look at the subsidies. The UK has like 10 times more to lose than Europe does here. Uh, and they are kidding themselves if they think they are holding any kind of cards or have any kind of poker hand going into this. I just find it laughable. Um, what they have going for them is Europe typically in, on the, the negotiation level tend to be moderate and sort of pussy. So, you know, maybe this will just, you know, maybe this won't get emotional. Maybe this won't get ego driven. But if it does, um, Sterling's going to get hurt. I don't, you know, Sterling's not going to go to 110 or anything, but uh, Sterling could easily go back to 125 as these negotiations wobble. So be careful of this. I don't have a, I don't have a dog in this fight, but uh, I am looking at Euro Sterling higher, um, even today, perhaps through 23 for 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 a move back up to 50. Um, we'll have to see. <coughs> Oops, getting filled. Um, just ignore that. We, um, what else we got? We got S&Ps printed a low down in the teens on Friday. That was one heck of a bearish day. My, my. We are bearish this stuff. Uh, are we going to make a trade above, uh, 3298, which was the high 3297 and a half to be specific, which was the high on Friday. Uh, looks doubtful. Could happen though. Um, we're in this period of hysteria where this wants to change. This trend wants to change, but powerful forces are at play, where the buy the dip people are still um, buying the dip, and the people who are short, who have been burned now for three years, are, are leaving tight stops. So you have buy the dip people who are holding up uh, the bottom here, and then you have short sellers who are leaving stops um, close by, and so they're getting done. So logic is down, pushes it down, buy the dips by, short sellers leave tight stops, it goes back up. You get this hysterical up and down movement. This is often what happens um, when you're about to change trend. Very difficult to trade, um, and it can last weeks, this kind of thing. So I don't really know where to short this thing today. I'm thinking, uh, you know, in the 60s, so selling high ones. There's sort of a pivot there, 60 after we broke 60 on Friday. We kind of hit the skids. There will be stops probably above 60. There will be stops certainly above 50. Um, we'll see. Where to short stocks? I would say between 58 and 78 today. Um, but we're not really firm on that yet, so we're just kind of waiting and watching. What else is out there? 
Dollar Czar smashed. Rolling blackouts. More terrible news. This currency is screwed. Um, you know, do we trade 20 this year? Surely. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, South Africa. Uh, surely we do. Um, don't know why you would buy Rand. Very, very bearish week last week. Euro Swiss can't get out of its own way. We had a real good chance to turn with this bullish engulfing. And then four down days. Bang, bang, bang. 66 was the low. Um, you know, if you do think we're risk on today, go ahead and buy 76. You only have to leave a 10 point stop. You can lean on this bar from the 28th of January because that is pretty powerful. But. Euro Swiss cannot get out of its own way. We saw um, the Swiss Bank, the Swiss National Bank, last week screwing around with interest rates, uh, screwing around with repo amounts. We know they're here. We know they're watching. They are not going to let this go, contrary to what everyone believes. And people think that uh, they're worried about the U.S. calling them a currency manipulator. Trust me, the Swiss National Bank does not give two shits what the U.S. thinks. Um, the Swiss National Bank has hand over the United States. Use your imagination. Why is that? Just use your imagination. Um, so I do expect these guys to be around when they come in and how they come in. Um, I don't know, but it'll be a very sort of Swiss way. So it won't be super obvious. It won't be the obvious way. It'll be uh, sort of the clever Swiss way. So keep an eye on Euro Swiss. Um, I'm sick of banging the banging the drum on the longs. This has been a, a just a slaughterhouse down to the right hand side. But do keep an eye on this. Dollar CAD keeps going higher. Uh, the oil correlation is kind of broken, but um, not really sure what to do with this Dollar CAD. I don't know why we're even looking at it, but it does bring me to. Um, something I do know what to do with which is oil short oil uh, is the way are we gonna get a little bit of a um, man 53 5330 on uh, on Friday can't believe I miss that anyway uh, we do like short oil global demand story uh, market long story market leaning on um, OPEC we did trade 5042 last night. Uh, how that happened, I don't even know. It's kind of amusing. But through 50 bucks is kind of a big line in the sand. Um, so don't want to sell low ones here. We're looking for consolidation. So sell as close to 54 as you can. Core short oil um, through 50 bucks is going to be a beautiful, beautiful trade. Um, anyway, keep an eye on oil. Look, I think I'm talking too much here. Um, look both ways today. Aussie looks like it wants to go higher. Watch Euro Yen through 40. We're selling high ones in stocks. We're selling high ones in oil. Um, Bitcoin 9,500 now. If you still own those from 8,300 last 10 days ago, you got to hold this. This is going to break 10,000 uh, maybe this week. Uh, it's another sort of way to trade all of this nonsense, uh, this global kerfuffle, long Bitcoin. Um, anyway, said enough. Good luck out there, people. Uh, have a great trading day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.